And now, please welcome Hickman Ersick, CEO of Western Union, and Eric Schatzker, anchor and editor at large at Bloomberg Television for a fireside chat. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Delighted to have this opportunity to chat with Hikmet Ursik of Western Union. Hikmet, I want you to look around. You know why the room is full, of course. These people, they want to disrupt you. <laughs> they want to eat your lunch. Are you scared? No, absolutely not. I heard that story for, I've been <laughs> in the company 15 years, Eric, and I heard that story for 15 years, and it has not been the case. The reason for that is, if you look at Western Union, we are quite, a com we, our competency is moving money cross-border, or moving currencies cross-border. 80% of our transactions are out of the US. And it's not easy once the money moves borders, delivering in a way fast, reliable, use cases oriented, in a way how the customer wants it. And we've been doing that for 165 years. And we've been, we have the, the, our DNA of innovating us all the time. Now, for the last, I would say the last, until the last 10 years, we've been doing that cash to cash point of transfer. So customers were walking in on a location and picking up somewhere in Nepal or in Vietnam or in Chile in minutes the money. The new use cases tells us also saying that you can send money from your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. And we adopted our system. We allow a customer, anyone in from this room, can send money in minutes to Argentina. Anyone from this room can send money from their app in minutes to Vietnam. And somebody in Vietnam, in the rural areas, one of our 500,000 locations, or 100,000 ATMs, can pick up the money in minutes. So I'll bet you know, the room is here to disturb us, but somebody has to make that. Somebody has to re realize that. So that's hard. There is a lot of capital going into transfer and payment platforms. Is that money wasted then? I would not uh, waste it. I learned from these guys. So that's the, these guys are also showing me what the future of the customer use cases are, what the new platforms look like. Our platform, West Union platform, over the years have been developing itself. And one of the most uh, things we learned from these guys is that showed us the innovative way of sending and making the settlement and the anti-money laundering and the transaction processing way in an easy way that the customer can get the money somewhere in the world easy way. So the money is not wasted. <clears throat> if you think that we move a year about $180 billion worldwide, mm -hmm. it's a lot of money, right? And the customer trusts us. 29 transactions every second. You have to do that. So we, what we learned from that new platforms is that how do you set, uh, do that 29 transactions every second in an optimal way that the customer doesn't feel the pain? Um, it's painful, the process is quite complex actually. You, if you do it in 122 currencies like we do it, mm -hmm. if you have to do the settlement with 500,000 locations worldwide in 200 countries, if you have to go to a Tajikistan Reserve Bank saying that give me a license, which I did personally in Dushanbe, and uh, saying that okay, I can operate here, it's complex, but then you have to optimize the system behind that. And that's what we learned from these guys. And these guys are, you know, are quite innovative. And it's not easy, as you know, it's also, you know, we are a big company, a huge company, being in 200 countries. And sometimes innovation is not internal, also external. So how are you taking advantage of what you learn from these upstarts? Well, obviously, we have competition worldwide everywhere. First of all, you learn from First of all, you learn from the consumer. Consumers are telling us, you know, Hikmet, it's, I would like to really, while my daughter calls me in South Africa because she lost her wallet, her passport, and you are riding an um, uh, underground in New York, you get this text message, and you want to send money immediately, $50, $100, mm -hmm. $200.
and they tell us uh, how to do that. And then the, um, the, what we do also in, in company-wise, first we take the, uh, take the voice of the customer, and we do look at the market for the competition. Uh, we did, learned a lot from, for instance, a company called Zoom.com in San Francisco area. We learned a lot uh, from them and how they did it. So what I did is that, and I saw that the business there is doing pretty well. And to transform the company, I asked actually my head of Africa, who was running for me Africa, the retail money transfer business, who was quite active on the mobile wallet with M-Pesa, mobile wallet in different parts of Uganda. I asked him to go to San Francisco and build our digital business. So we opened a lab, in, a digital lab in San Francisco. We were two people two and a half years ago. Now we are about 250 people. We are larger than Zoom. We build this, all these people. We hired people from that area. We hired multi-skilled, uh, multicultural people and build our digital business. And we connected our traditional business, which is retail money transfer business, with the digital business. And connecting that, building that secret sauce was our uh, 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 really the success to story uh, to build a very successful digital business. So you've made a strong case for why your business is robust operates worldwide, settles in 122 different currencies. Which parts of your business are vulnerable, if any? Well, um, obviously every business is, every, when a CEO says that this business is not vulnerable, it has not an issue, that's an issue, right? I mean, I think um, the pace of transformation is for us very important. How fast we transform to the new use cases. Um, in the digital business, 80% of our customers are new to Western Union. That was a big strategic move. We invested there, and they're coming. So the big question is, how fast can you adapt the new use cases and keep the growth and keep the same way uh, the margins in a way that you make money, you satisfy the customer needs, same way the shareholder value? I think that's an excellent question. How do you do it? Well, I think what we did is that uh, we really optimized, transformed our core money transfer business. We kept it, you know, we found, we keep the loyalty with our existing customers. In the same way, with that uh, cash flow we produced, we invested in the new initiatives. And to do that for a public company, publicly traded company is not easy. And by the way, on the way there, you have speed bumps. Speed bumps like the regulatory environment changed in the last four or five years enormous. We took about three and a half percent of our revenue invested in the compliance department. And we said, okay, the anti-money laundering environment should be a competitive advantage for us. We should own this environment. We should be good. We don't want bad money in our system. So we invested about three and a half percent of our revenue in the compliance. And meanwhile, it's like that is that many banks many financial institutions are coming to us saying that, you know, Hikmet, this is a hard environment. Can you process this transaction for us? Can we send money to India in a way that it's good money, it's good processed, you pay out in minutes, and that's something you do really go to your values and invest and take risks also. What about Bitcoin? <laughs> you mean digital currency? Call it whatever you like, digital, crypto, Bitcoin, doesn't matter. Well, I am the first company, if that's a use case there, to uh, pay out in digital currency, I will do that, right? I mean, first of all, we have to define what a digital currency is. People, some people say it's a currency, some people say it's a platform, and I'm lost between that, and our, if you ask our consumers- in Could be both, might be either. Well, if you ask our consumers in Bangladesh, they can't even write it, they don't know, even know what a digital currency is. So I think what we are sometimes sitting in our offices, in our labs, create currencies without asking the consumers, without knowing the consumer needs. I'm not sure that uh, digital currency is an Opal platform. And the second thing is that digital currency is not issued by a reserve bank. It's not regulated. How do you do a chargeback? How do you do anti-money laundering? How do you do the uh, settlement in a way that it turns out to a use case? If I send 10 bitcoins to Uganda, how do I pay my bills there? How do I turn that money to cash? 
how do you turn that money to an account? So it's a, it's a very complex environment. And then who controls the amount of issued currencies, digital currencies? It has to be reserve banks. You, you know, you can't, well, you can't. In the case of Bitcoin, it's the programming. It's a programming, but if you look at the totally, how much Bitcoin can you issue? Who controls it? 21 million Bitcoins. How do, how do you turn that to a dollars? So how do you transfer that to euros? Well, I can convert Bitcoins today. If I had a Bitcoin wallet and a Bitcoin in it, I could convert it to dollars. I, I don't think that's a long-term vision. It's really people are really keeping it in a smaller area. If you want to transfer the money cross-border to uh, about 7 billion people, you change that to a currency. Today, why, why, why money transfer the currency are so successful is very simple. A country, Finland, wants to send money to rupees, India. It's euros against rupees regulated. And there is a system behind that. And I'm not sure if it works with Bitcoin or with other currencies. So you said earlier that you like to learn from companies that are doing innovative or disruptive right. things. Would you consider in order to understand Bitcoin better? Yeah, I think we have Buying a, a Bitcoin wallet or something of that nature? Sure, we have a project group looking at that. I mean, we have an innovation department. Our CIO, uh, uh, David Thompson, has been very active on that. We are looking at that. If the use case is there and the business model works, why not? I will definitely look at but it. But what's better? Is it building it yourself or buying it? You know, you're, you, you explained that using Zoom as an example and bringing people over from Uganda, you built your own digital business. It's what, two years old now? 6% of One your of revenue? Old, yeah. Okay. Would you be better off to expand that digital business buying other companies that do things that you might like to do? Perhaps some companies that are here. Yeah. First of all, uh, I think it's, I sound like a politician, but it sounds both. You have to do both. I think you have to, you know, it, I think um, you know, companies like Western Union have this innovation DNA, but we do look on small ideas, you know, you know, not small ideas, good ideas, that you can take it and implement in the company. Uh, we look, you know, we look about 10, 12 ideas a year, and maybe one or two of them are, you do a deep dive in on a business case, and maybe in two, three years, one turns out to be a business model which you really can't take it and implement it. Um, innovation is, these guys are more active than a company like Western Union. They are more, in, uh, more entrepreneurial. We have, being a public company, being have roles are, you know, we're a little bit slower than them. But um, as we did it at our digital lab in San Francisco, there's also proof that you can do it yourself if you really focus and have the resilience, have the resilience saying that you're gonna go through that. Regardless, you have a vision, you have to communicate that, and you have to really follow that, and it, it, it works. But I'm just asking the question because I wonder whether a company, even a company as large as Western Union, can be active on so many, on the, on so many points no. of the vanguard. You can't be active in, I don't know, like the 7,000 people here. I don't uh, I think um, you do have to look around. You do have to have an m &A strategy which is uh, aligned with your strategy. And, but this uh, has to be really aligned with your business, business profile, business strategy. Uh, you can't go around and shop only. You really have to understand the customer needs. The challenge we as West Union have is that most of the ideas presented are far away from customer needs are more technical ideas, more processing ideas, which doesn't fit in with the needs of the customer. It's far away. It doesn't translate to a business model. The trick of a company for West, like a West, you know, the big companies is how do you turn that to a business model and um, implement it? Most transfers are between friends and family, aren't they? They are. So why not integrate with a network of friends and family like Facebook. <laughs> well, I mean, Facebook is more than happy to use Western Union. I mean, you know, we can sign an agreement and every Facebook user can use Western Union and we will drop money worldwide. I think we do have a platform. We are, it's open to banks. 75% of our uh, agent network worldwide are banks and financial institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, why not also social medias say, say that, okay, Hikmet, you know, Western Union has here a good network. 
uh, good compliance settlement, why not we can use why it? Why not? So, yeah. So? Don't ask me that, ask Mark. I have to ask Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> I'll put that on my list of things to ask Mark. No, I think, I think we are open. I invite everyone here, big, large networks, to use our platform. I think we do uh, offer really big companies, also small companies, who wants to transfer money globally, uh, our platform, you know, doing in a way that not many companies can do in a such an efficient way. You have said that your biggest challenge is finding new uses for your network. So share with us some of the things that Western Union could be doing that it isn't doing now. Well, I think uh, one of the uh, things which we slowly start is the payments part, cross-border payments. So if you talk about the cross-border payments, we are always looking at a customer segment. Generally, payments industries are looking at a customer send a segment where good funds are available, which means that you're looking for people who already have a good credit card or you know, they already are okay to transfer money. Nobody looks for, for payment service for the underbank, underserved customer. But the needs today in a digital environment is the same. Everybody goes online, everybody goes mobile, right? And wants to buy a good cross-border or you know, mm -hmm. pay a tuition payments. For, for instance, one of our examples we have is grow, uh, fast growing payments industry. What we are in today is are the cross-border university payments. Stanford or Oxford or Cambridge wants to have students from India, wants to have students from China. If you are an Indian student, you want to pay your uh, tuition payments. Um, you want to transfer your money in rupees you, to get a visa to enter US or to UK to do that. So the cross-border payments, also for small amounts, is something that we are looking at it, and I'm excited about that. Some, what would be a good example of well, such a cross-border payment. For instance, buying really you know, small goods, but the people don't have credit cards. Or the credit cards in India, Bangladesh, or in Vietnam or China are not accepted by a payment system. Here is where Union comes in. We collect the money, we sell, uh, tell the biller, OK, the money is good, good, so you can send. And there are 7 billion people worldwide. We have to understand the energy of the 7 billion people in a global economy where everybody is communicating, everyone wants to, try, uh, want to trade, and, but they can't. It's not easy for them to do a cross-border payment. Do you know what percentage of your customers are banked, underbanked, or just unbanked altogether? Well, 75% uh, of our customers are banked globally but they're underserved. I would say 100% are underserved, <laughs> almost. Uh, it's a big difference between banked and uh, underserved. You know, if you are in, a, in, in South Asia or in, uh, in Egypt, you can open easily and bank account from with a post office. But it's not easy, Eric, to do something with that account. So here we, where we come, and that's why we serve these customers, that's why we enable them payments, and we, that's why we enable them the money transfer part. So the customers do, once they get the trust, they are also, I mean, not the amounts like we know, but they do trade with 50, 30, 40 dollar amounts, and that's mm -hmm. big for them. So one of the things that we've learned from banks is that there's a lot more money to be made by leveraging the customer relationship, taking more of the wallet share. So you have people coming to Western Union to do money transfers. What else can they do? What else should they be doing? What else could they be doing with you? Well, I really believe the future of the money transfer is the mobile. I think building the relationship on a via mobile phones and building your customer loyalty on a mobile phone will be the future also for West Union where we invest. It's not only sending, doing the transactions, also collecting loyalty program and being really a long-term financial service Payments Institute, you can even But a loyalty get, program that you manage or that other people are managing? Well, in our system, if you look at our system, people, we give the platform and the people manage it. Our agents are managing the transfers that also could be offered to our agent program, to the other programs, the loyalty program, that so they can collect points and sell insurance. With Allianz, one of the biggest insurance companies of the world, worldwide, as you know, we have a program which we cross-sell our existing agents with, uh, with insurance programs. So the, the, the people do buy then with the money they get, a life insurance, in uh, different parts of the world. There are, I just checked, 900 publicly traded US banks with a market cap smaller than yours. 
and thousands more, of course, that were private. Would you ever consider buying a bank? <laughs> well, uh, I think I, I, I am not going to be a bank. I mean, that's we are a really payments and money transfer company for underserved, and we are expanding our portfolio also for other um, for other. Uh, parts or other customers, but we do have a full bank license in Europe, for instance, because we need a full bank license in Europe to operate with our digital business. We do have a bank license in in the U.S. for certain part. We do our, use our bank license in um, in in Europe to do Western Union business solutions, uh, business to business transfer for F for an exchange trade. So, I think um, we do. I don't think that we're going to be a bank, but I'm very pleased with my situation where I am today. Hickman, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you Thanks, so much. Please join me in thanking Hickman Ursek of Western Union.